historically the right to die in America grew up uh, in the setting of severe brain injury. The Cameron and Quinlan case, Cruzan, uh, Shivo, um, th this is where we said this is the ultimate in medical futility. There's nothing that can or should be done. And however, there was a subset of patients within that, that universe of patients for whom there was nothing that could be done who were actually people for whom something might be done and who in fact weren't permanently unconscious but conscious and had been ignored. The challenge with consciousness is that is what makes us who we are. That's, that's the essence of ourselves. Um, and, and when we lose it, um, we, we sort of uh, cease to, to be, in a sense, human entities because consciousness is what defines us. In fact, you know, the old philosophical soul that only consciousness you know is your own. And the only way we know that someone else is conscious is by the proxy of their ability to communicate it to others. So the goal here is to give people who are conscious the ability to communicate with others so they can be recognized as being conscious. The minimally conscious state is a problem that we're aware of because of technology, because we can peer inside the brain. And it's also a problem that technology might help to solve by getting these people more reliably engaged with others. But ultimately, I think it's a human rights challenge. It's not a question of technology. It's what do we owe people who are conscious that heretofore we thought have been not? And is consciousness a human right? We were able to put electrodes into a, a patient um, who was in the minimally conscious state who couldn't communicate and with the, with the insertion of like a pacemaker for the brain bilaterally into the thalamus, this person who couldn't talk before, could barely communicate, could say six or seven word sentences, could say the first 16 words of the Pledge of Allegiance, he could tell his mother he loved her. That story has never been told in full, it's told in detail in this, in this book. But what that work has done, along with other things, has begun to identify a circuit that undergirds consciousness, what Dr. Schiff and, and Jerry Posner have described as the meso circuit. And how that scientific discovery, which I think is revolutionary, uh, happened, and, and the steps that were made in that process are part of this story. It's important that, that we, while we preserve the right to die, we also affirm the right to care, and we, we preserve choices. So, so that families who were confronted with these challenges, and this book is a lot about how families made decisions about whether, whether to withhold or withdraw care or to move forward. And, and, and it, there's no simple answer to that question. And this book tries to capture the nuance of that debate uh, that these, in, these families have gone through. I think it's a story that has to be told about patients who uh, are on the edge of consciousness but are conscious and they've been historically neglected and ignored by the healthcare system and there's some really exciting emerging signs that can make it possible for us to bring these people back into human community. So it was, it was a compelling you know, human interest story, uh, the advent of new science, new technology, and the possibility to make a difference. That's why I felt I had to tell the story. Mm -hmm.